Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 443. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake. I'm in the KIB studio today with love of my life, Mary Lou. And there are more than you realize. There are more of us than you realize, guys. There are people that are waking up, that are seeing what's going on. Millions upon millions strong. The good news about what's going on in our nation, it is becoming so apparent that if if there's a person that is, is thinking rationally, how could they not see it? Now, I think the liberals are seeing what's going on and um, are just trying to do this game thing, banking on that the rest of us are idiots and can't see it. You know, back years ago when, when I first started finding out things, nobody talked about any of this, I think, except for maybe Alex Jones, <laughs> you know, the... The, the ones that, that knew what was going on back then. But but now it's becoming apparent. And um, didn't we have a presidential debate? Oh, my word. I know a lot of people didn't watch it. They just couldn't stand it. But I wanted to watch it so I could it see. It hurt. It was very hard to watch. It was very difficult. Um, I, I still, th- my heart grieves over... Um, the whole Biden family. Now I know that they've been used. I know that they um, are corrupt. That most people are just think, oh, you know, these these people shouldn't exist. Um, I always look at people from, you know, the beginning of their lives and think, what in the world has happened? What has, what's gone on that's that's got them in this state? Um, well, if there was ever anybody that was showing signs of uh, dementia. Alzheimer's or what, whatever the condition is, um, our current that. leader yeah. has that. And saw the same symptoms with my mom. Yeah, I mean, she it's... did. You know, and and uh, before she completely lost touch with reality, you you could be sitting and I just look over and be watching her as, as there were conversations going on around her. And um, I've noticed this with a lot of people; they'll they'll just droop their mouth open. That's it's. I think it's just part of just losing cognitive ability and he did that through the whole thing yeah and part of the time he was looking off to the left i don't even know who he was looking at i don't know if he had a somebody over there giving him directions a handler or something uh, but he could he couldn't carry this off you know watching all this um i, I was listening to different commentators and uh, mark driscoll that basically he shared he said this is nothing short of elder abuse because they they have somebody in office that is not fit simply because they thought they could use them to win. But I'm also picking up on things. You know, there's, there's, I mean, even Trump called him a Manchurian candidate during the thing, and there's links to where the, the family got money back from China. I thought one of the, te- the really telling things, we watched a, uh, a short thing with Dr. Phil, that Dr. Phil is interviewing the different candidates, and the first one he did was Trump. Now, uh, he has a long history of being this level-headed, being honest, and so he, they did a promo that they were going to put on the different social platforms. Well, TikTok is owned by China. And he has, I think, but he said between 5 to 7 million followers on TikTok. TikTok rejected the promo because it was about Trump. Mm-hmm. They don't want Trump, any, anything about Trump. And in fact, he said that some of the research, some of the things we're hearing from people of, is that uh, the quickest way to get you kicked off a of TikTok is to mention anything about Trump, positive or negative. They want hit, they want that completely out of the social consciousness for all these young people using it. Well, you know, TikTok's owned by China. So if China doesn't want Trump in the social conversation, who's man do the who are, who are they supporting? Well, it's it's kind of an odd thing because you watch different commentators and you you get their their opinions. Obviously, there's a huge portion of the Democratic Party right now that is saying he should step down. We're hearing that. We've also seen uh, the Obamas, the Clintons, several of the people are still backing him. So, so this could be a division that's coming up. That uh, you know, division never helps, <laughs> and so that might work in the favor of the conservatives in this situation. You know, I, I was really. Glad that President Trump held it together, though, 
You know, he didn't go for <coughs> There were so many times he could have just laid him out there and, and said, look at this. And, it, and he didn't do that. And I was glad he didn't do that because they'd attacked him, you know, fiercely over that. And so uh, there's nobody can deny that, that our nation was in better shape with President Trump, especially with the, the other nations. Yes. You know, they, they knew he, he was powerful. They knew he meant what he said. And, and we can see the results of that when he would tell them the different nations things. And, uh, well, we you know, had, they we had an exploding economy. We had gas all the way down to $1.56 a gallon. I mean, just, I mean this, this, the price of gas alone can greatly affect an economy. And, you know, we, we look at these things. And I, I, one of the things I'm, I'm kind of watching in this, too, remember when he was in office and they kept on saying, we can't let him have the nuclear football. That, I mean, he has dementia, he has this, that. And then they put in a candidate that has it. There's, it it's, like, it's like, you know, if God is, is doing something and the enemy comes against it, then it's like the very things that you say <laughs> yeah. they're doing, you do. And, it, it's, and it's, it's almost like it's a, a divine well, justice kind of thing because when you look at the, the tactics of Sololinsky, which the entire left have embraced, you always accuse your opponent of doing what you're doing so that he can never bring it up. But in, in God's kingdom, though, it's like an Esther moment. Yeah, it is. You know, what Haman planned happened to him. And, and that's what I'm seeing over and over. Uh, you know, I, w- I was even concerned about because people don't understand the dynamics if God's using a, a person. And I'm not saying that he's everything's okay because I know Paula White's been an advisor to him, and I pray for her every day. I think she is programmed multiple. That's my opinion from what I've seen. Uh, I think she was taken as a little girl. She, I'm sure she doesn't remember that, but with everything I've seen, I think that that's happened to her, so I pray for her, but she's been an advisor to him. Uh, Norman Vincent Peale, a Freemason, had a big influence in his life. There's all kinds of things we got to pray about, but sometimes God just takes a man and uses him, and um, so that's what we've got to keep in mind in all of this, and uh, in my, uh, this is my opinion. If... God's going to have mercy on our nation. He'll make a way for President Trump to be in because I don't have any doubt the votes are there. We've just seen how they do this, you know, this big election rigmarole, and so uh, we've got to be praying about things. Um, you know, and I was praying this morning, and one of the things that uh, God brought up for us to begin praying against is controlled chaos, is that they, they want chaos in America. And I think that regardless of who gets in office, there is going to be chaos loose. I mean, it, we're, they, they have pushed this thing to such a degree that whoever gets in, there's going to be the other side raised up. I mean, even before the first time that uh, Trump was elected, they were talking about California and New York and several other states that were already talking about succeeding from the union, as well as the possibility of civil war. The Democrats were talking about that. And uh, I think that one of the things that I have been praying against that I have been aware of since the 90s is the elite want to bring America down. They don't want it because there, there, there there is a covenant with America with God that uh, some of the things that our, even our founding fathers put in that they drew from the Word of God, which is uh, to the consternation of a lot of the liberals, they did. I mean, when you, when you actually go back and read the founding documents, God's all over the place. And the, the idea that all of us are equal because we've been created in the image of God, that we have these unalienable rights, flies in the face of the New World Order. I mean, even the, the, the right of the Second Amendment flies in the face uh, of the new world order, because uh, when you when you look at Nazi Germany, look at communism in, in, uh, with the Soviet Union when they took over, or China, the first thing they do is they have to disarm the citizenry so that they can take over, and then it becomes hell on earth for the people living there. And it, it's it's all the same agenda, and they they will cause controlled chaos to get this agenda done, and they don't care really who gets caught in the meat grinder as long as it's not them. And I, th- I think the things that can stay a lot of this is if we, as we begin seeking the face of God and say, God, you need to stop. You know, w- w- you tell us what we need to do. We'll do the things that we need to do. But there's a lot of things, Mary, in this that only heaven can do. But it, that's true. 
And that's, that's why I think our prayers have to be along the lines of, Almighty God, we ask you to thwart every plan and scheme of the enemy that's going against this nation. Mm -hmm. because And ask forgiveness for the sins of all the players in Jesus' name. Because um, obviously our current leader does not have the ability to hold things together or think rationally. Well, I think well we got to ask who's running this thing then. I think it, well, I think the, <laughs> the elite are running this. Yes. For sure. And so it, it will help if we ask forgiveness for their sins and to break a cult power. And, you know, I've said this before. This doesn't absolve them of their need for salvation, repentance, and all that. But what I have seen is when you ask forgiveness for those sins, it will it will block, it will uh, move back a cult power so they can't get many, and many of the things done. And I think that's what we've seen with Hillary Clinton. She was supposed to be in there. Yes. Let me tell you, this was a planned decades and decades and from way back planned, probably before her birth and bloodlines and all these things, to get all these people in place. Now, God can turn this over, but um, I'm asking that he, he really work with the church right now because, you know, it's got to begin there. So we need the church to go through this refining process so that we can handle what's ahead. Uh, and I get more concerned the more that I see, you know, I can, back in in the days when the holy laughter was going on, and I guess that's kind of getting a revival right now, and all those things, I, I saw it, but I just, I didn't have an, um, I didn't have the confidence to trust my discernment. I, I never spoke out on anything back then. You know, I had that one time when we went to a church where the holy laughter and all that, we went to a conference there, and, um, you know, they, they could only fit so many people up front, and so they they said, well, we'll send this these rows down to, uh, you weren't with me. Uh, I don't know why you weren't with me on that one, but anyway, I was in, maybe I was sitting by somebody else that we knew. But anyway, we went down, um, they took us downstairs, and so I was sitting there, and all the and I thought, okay, I'll I'll let them pray for me if this is something we're supposed to have. And I remember uh, as I was going down the stairs, I heard the Holy Spirit speak. These are like lambs being led to the slaughter, and I thought, oh my goodness, okay, so I'm going to start praying. And and uh, and I remember their attitude was horrible when we got down there. These these people were coming along and just kind of almost like punching people in the belly, and 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 I thought some were going down and so they came by me you know and I was just sitting there in my mind saying father I'll just receive anything that's of you and so they prayed over me and then if you don't do this whatever they, they were expecting they just look at you like well you're you're a bad person or something so I just kind of moved over to the edge but back then I I, I saw a lot of stuff because we went a lot of places yeah. we were well, you, know, you know it was at that same meeting you know that you kind of set me up front because it's like Mike well, you know if God's doing something you need a good dose no, of that it. was a different one it was a different one yeah that one was in that was one in I'm Tulsa. talking about was in St. Louis oh, the other okay. one was in Tulsa um, and and that was an eye-opener um, and and this was a time when I was now I hadn't come through all all my healing this was in the eight months period when god delivered me from depression i was just soaking up everything i could find i was i was just thinking oh god show me you know what's you and and i was reading the word and all of a sudden what i was reading in the word wasn't matching what i was seeing mm -hmm. and so that's when i started saying mike i don't understand this i don't understand this and and, and god was taking me through a refiner's process and then of course the depression everything came all back i'm in horrible shape worse than i was before had to pray my way out of it had to let god take me step by step on what to pray show me things that were in my family that i couldn't remember i didn't have any clue what was going on and he took me step by step but now I'm looking at this and thinking, oh, my word, we all got hands laid on us by people that. So the result of that is they were passing spirits around. Everybody got spirits passed to them, passed to them. I, everybody probably was in the same kind of condition I was as far as, okay, if this is in the church, then, you know, then these, these are men of God, so we have to listen to what's been, and it was being taught all over. In mm -hmm. the groups we were in, that's that's what it was, and it would, you know, if, if we would have stood against that at the time, my goodness, I don't even know what would have happened. 
But we just started praying. And then once I found out what happened to me, I thought, oh, my goodness, what if this has happened to lots and lots of people? And guess what, folks? I see them all the time. Yeah. I see whether they're programmed multiples like me, I see triggers coming out of their mouth, and they will come out of the media all at one time. You'll, you'll hear somebody say this phrase over here, all of a sudden everybody's saying it. And I think it's because everybody, there's a mind control mechanism that they have been able to move the masses and move the masses and cause all this, this chaos. And the church hasn't been strong because we've all been sucked into this vortex of, of a situation where we not only didn't have power, we lost strength in the body of Christ. We this was draining our strength. Uh, what God took me to um, this week, I was reading in Ephesians 5, and I'll start at verse 6. It says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now... Uh, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is accept acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And, and here's the truth, guys. I've met people from Toronto. I've met people that um, have been to all these different types of, of moves. And, and I am telling you, this was a strategy, a scheme of the enemy to get us all in such bad shapes and, and attached to spirits. Yeah. Because you take these, these meetings, and, and I've seen this years ago, but I mean, they've got lots of them now where people are trying to show us. The problem is the people, most of the people trying to show are cessationists. So they're just trying to prove, listen, this is proof that there, there are no gifts that God's using right now. There's no prophecy there, and, and that's not true. But if you ever wanted to have a time when it would cause confusion, they've got post after post of, of people that are in these, these uh, meetings of uh, Hindus and different groups and this and that and people that are in the New Age. It looks just like what's going on well, in these meetings. Well, it's the exact same manifestation. It's the spirits. The Dalai Lama has the, the, the holy laughter, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot going on with Kundalini spirits. There, there's several things that we, we do know. Now, you know, I, I've been in this a long time. I've been in the charismatic movement since the late 70s. A lot of the leaders back then would not have tolerated anything that's going on today. I mean, absolutely would not have tolerated. Uh, we have, uh, I, I think that a lot of this stuff is a Kundalini spirit. I think, I I think uh, that it has been brought up from India. But the, 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 we need to remember that the enemy plans sometimes decades ahead of time. And they, they plant certain situations. The Bible says that God confirms the word with signs following, and it's all about who Jesus is, okay? When we, when we move away from the word into other things, the Holy Spirit will draw back because he's not going to confirm doctrines from the mystery religions. He's not going to confirm things that do not glorify Christ. And then we've, we've had people bring in other spirits because people are hungry for signs and wonders. That's, that's true. And I would, and do you want to, to, just to share my heart, I would ha rather have the preaching of the word, a true word, than any sign and wonder if it's going to be false. Well, and the truth of it is, as I see it, and you, you can tell me if you agree with me or not on this, but... I think that there has to be the foundation laid of the word before God can pour out his spirit. Otherwise, this is what you get. Yeah, we, This is what you get. We, we do know that for decades, Freemasons have infiltrated the Baptist church. We know for, for all the way back since the 80s, we were warned, and, and uh, there was this book called Over the Rainbow or something like that, where uh, this one lady talked about, listen, the new age is infiltrating the charismatic movement. Now we, we were watching a, th a, a thing the other day, and this, this is coming out of Bethel, that, you know, when we had to study MK Ultra and all the different things in the Earth Battalion, there was something that we ran across called remote viewing. And they're actually having, they're actually teaching people remote viewing as if, as if it is a job of the prophetic movement. And that is not of God. No, because I, I don't know that I didn't, I didn't have some training in that. Now, that's just, 
just because of things that, that I've seen and things that uh, I've observed. But what I did with me is I said, I'm telling you anything like a remote viewing, any occult power, anything that they did with me that I don't remember, that I can't put with, then I, I renounce it, I rebuke it. And I say, I will not be used in that way, in the name of Jesus. And I believe God can show us things, and I put that in the hands of God, but I absolutely forbid it. And and any person that has any connection to anything should be praying those type of prayers because these are the things they can destroy you with. You absolutely. know, they've got churches that are teaching people to, and I think Bethel may be one of them because one of the people I talked to that was I was so concerned about years ago that went to Bethel Church, they said that they could go up... Um, because they're seated in high places with, with Jesus, and they could go up above, and they could point their finger and direct this. And I thought, you have just entered uh, the astral plane where you can be destroyed if they want to destroy you. When they're done using you, they'll destroy you. And, and you know what you see with these people? What, and, and I'm telling you this from what I've seen with my eyes. They get destroyed physically. Yeah. You aren't supposed to be going up there and flying around. If God wants to translate somebody, we let him translate them. If, we, if he wants to speak to us, we welcome God and ask for him to, to guide us, lead us, speak to us. But we don't initiate things. No, and it, we, we see this over and over again. Uh, Blavatsky, astral projecting, uh, communed with the, with the Great White Council, which I think were fallen seraphim that she got a lot of her doctrine from. In fact, a lot of it, you cannot get a hold of a lot of her writings that are, have not been heavily redacted. Those are only allowed to members of the Illuminati and members of the UN. And at the same time, we have rabbis that are doing the same thing that are in Kabbalah, and they're going up into the second heaven. You know, a demonic spirit doesn't care if he uh, shows up to you looking like E.T., or an ascended, or, or a dead rabbi, or whatever. He doesn't care. We're not, we're not supposed to be there, and it's an area of deception. And, and and yet we have prophets doing the same thing. We have rabbis doing the same thing. We have those in the occult doing the same thing. And there's such a difference in that, and a prophet in the Old Testament praying, and God brings them up to the third heaven. You cannot astral project into the third heaven. You can't do that. You're You're the highest you can go there. I, mean, I think there are astral layers within the second heaven, and then they talk about going in different layers. Um, but you cannot get to the third heaven unless Almighty God brings you there, and that's a very rare thing. And uh, I think one of the things that concerns me is when you hear some of these some of these prophets speaking, and it's like they have this express elevator. They're they're up in heaven three times a week. Um, so you're, you're telling me that you got more than than Isaiah or Jeremiah. <laughs> Uh, and I, I think part of it is the is the nature, and I, I on a daily basis I get I get these emails uh, from companies saying you know you you neither need to add this to your podcast or we need to do this because you're not ranking high enough in social media. Whenever you go on YouTube, Mary, it it is an ocean of every point of view. It is correct, incorrect, and I mean just an onslaught. How do you stand out, especially if you're counting on the monetization to fund your ministry? There's, there is a, what I, what I saw the ancient Gnostics doing, even in, in, uh, in Paul's day, that they would go from town to town and they would come up with more outlandish things and more outlandish things and more, because it was like the weirder and the more outlandish uh, whatever vision and stuff that they had, the more money they got. And YouTube and, and these and the social media platforms have almost put us into that same position. It's like the angrier we get or whatever this we get, uh, the, the more views they get, and the more money they get, and the more hits they get. Um, I would just, and I've told these companies, just leave us alone. I'm very happy where I am because <laughs> I'm not going to say anything unless God says it. And, and I would just rather have dead air than to, have any, than to be a part of this mess. And, and we, we, we've got to back up and say, listen, it's time to rebuild the foundations, to go back to Christ and him crucified, and that Jesus is the cornerstone of everything in the kingdom. And in fact, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians said that the apostles and the prophets now, when he said that, you know, Jesus is the cornerstone and the foundation is built on the apostles and prophets, 
he wasn't referring to anybody in the New Testament except for Jesus. The New Testament didn't exist. He was referring to the apostles and prophets in the Old Testament. First apostle was Moses. First, first prophet was Abraham. And he said, listen, all this has been laid out, and so all, all the Old Testament lines up with Jesus. All the New Testament lines up with Jesus. When we understand who Jesus is, and, and this, this, is, this is something that we need to go back to, if you really want to know and get a full picture of Jesus, you have to study all five Gospels. Now, people just said, what? I know about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Those were showing Jesus as Messiah ben Joseph, so you get half of a picture of who God is. The fifth gospel is the book of Revelation because it is a revelation, a revealing of Jesus. Well, what were the gospels? A revealing of Jesus. In fact, I heard one uh, top theologian said, you know what, you can go seamlessly from Malachi to Revelation, and it's like you're dealing, still dealing with the Old Testament God. Well, the Old Testament God was Jesus. That's right. But you have to take Messiah ben Joseph and Messiah ben David and put him together to get the full the, view of who right. Jesus is. And when that comes together, Jesus explodes all over the Old Testament. And it's everything like, makes I sense. get it now. Everything I makes get sense it now. that way. That's right. And, and when we do that, all of a sudden the fear of the Lord begins to return. Because it's not this mushy gray stuff that I can get away with anything that I want because he's got to accept me because it's grace and it's love. Let me he tell you something. He doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus stared down the people of God, the ones that were in blood covenant with him ever since Abraham. And he said, if you love me, you keep my commandments, which is actually an echo of everything. It's in the Old Testament. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength and all your might. How are you going to do that? You're going to keep the commandments. And you actually had a pastor tell you one time that he didn't even think that the Ten Commandments were for today. Yeah, he's not a ministry anymore. And, and so, well, and, and I, I think there's this downward spiral. What what I'd like to show people is is the progression of this. You know, like this happened years ago. I've told this before, so sorry for repeating it for the ones that heard it. But um, back when I had, was finding out what was going on with me, and I found out, okay, these things have happened to me, and I was praying accordingly. I was just praying for all all the churches, because I thought, oh, my word. It was after we had people telling us how they'd taken this pastor out and set this pastor up. And so I was going around, and I went by this one church, and I just looked over, and I saw in the spirit realm there was um, a big, like, female figure with the skirt down over the steeple. And I looked over there, and I saw that, and so I just kept driving, and I thought, what in the world is that? Well, that's something you don't see every day. And so anyway... I didn't, I didn't know what it was. I just knew it was, was a spirit, and I was praying against it. Father, break any power uh, that's against that church. And that church was really going through some horrible things. And so later on, we found out where a steeple came from. Yeah. It's, it's, it's They're on a, almost every church. It's a phallic symbol. It goes back to the Catholic Church. It uh, went back to Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> and in fact, the, uh, I forget the name of the pope that had it brought up from Egypt, but it, it is a needle of Cleopatra which is actually mentioned in the Bible as an abomination to God. But it, it, it is the missing male member of Osiris. Okay, And so when you put that on the top of your church, that is an occult symbol of, of a phallic or a pillar. I mean, it, it can be a lot of, it, there's a lot of different terms that are, that are used uh, throughout the Word of God within the mystery religions, but it, it, it is an occult thing. And, you know, what the interesting story, when the Pope moved that up from Egypt, he, uh, he made a declaration. He said, listen, the guy who can set this properly in place and do it successfully, I'll, I will lavish him with riches. If you break it, I will wipe you and your entire family out. And you, you begin looking at that, and why was that so important? Tom Horn revealed it in, in his research. It takes the phallic symbol, which is the male symbol, and it takes the, uh, the domed, like St. Peter's Cathedral. Those two together are required to do an ancient ritual. That uh, One is the, the ever-pregnant womb of, of um, Isis. And it takes those two to go through a ritual so that you can move from being a priest 
to the Pope or the king of Egypt to a pharaoh, which was its original thing, or from a citizen to the president of the United States to do the exact same thing. Uh, one of the things he found out ever since George Washington in secret while they're doing uh, the swearing the president and everything, Masons are back in the background, and they're, they're doing an ancient ritual so that the spirit of Osiris will take hold of the president. And so that's something we need to be praying that's about. That's something that we need to be praying about. But whenever we put those things on the top of our churches, we are connecting with yeah. the same spirit that was in Egypt. And so you've got that on top over the church. The church. And so once I found that out, I looked back on that and I thought, oh my goodness, because that's, that's a gross ritual. And so I don't have to explain to you what was going on with that spirit. Yes. Um, but it, it gave me insight. It's like God just shows me things, and I don't even know what they are. And then later on, I'll find out what they are, and I'll ask him and say, God, reveal this to me. I don't even know what that was I saw. And when we, Other when than we it bought, was evil. <laughs> when we bought this building here in Diggins, they had one on the building. Yeah. And the very first thing that we did is we had it took, took it off. off. <laughs> that's before we started remodeling them. Yeah. That's the first thing it has got to go. So we've got things in already there at foundational level in churches. Then you go up a notch to the 60s when that was the turning point for the sexual revolution. Yeah, it was a satanic and, rebel. And started, started to where anything goes, any sexual activity is okay. That's your bodies. You can do what you want to with them. We go from that to the 70s where you have, we had the abortions begin, legalized, and that opened up the gates of hell because there's such, and, and it's it's been even up a notch over the 60s. because We're, there, we're in a satec- this, second satanic revel right now. This is just a reenactment of the ancient sacrifice to the gods of the Canaanites. Yeah. This is why that has built power to a big, huge Jezebel spirit over the nation. And so at all at the same time that, that that this is going on, you've got the spiritual power being built. You've got the Jezebel spirit going after families, because if they can if they can separate the husband and wife, they can go in and destroy them. There's there's such safety in a, a husband and wife praying mm-hmm. and not letting things divide them. That was one of the first things that God told me when I was getting healed. Is He said they're going to try to divide you and Mike so they can destroy you. And boy, they did. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, you could you could see the plan right in front of. And us. You know, when when you talk about a Jezebel spirit, we we see Jezebel, of course, in the story of Jezebel in the Old Testament. And I I, I really think that when Jesus referred to Jezebel in the New Testament, I don't necessarily think that woman's name was Jezebel. I think that she bore the spirit of Jezebel. But sometimes you'll see people in in the Word that so personify that spirit. And that, sp- that actually, that spirit's name is not necessarily Jezebel. Is that we have a biblical character? Yeah, I character. think you said it backwards. If I heard you right, it's it's that that was her name. It wasn't the spirit's name, right? right. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. I no, th- I think I think I think when Jesus rebuked that woman in the Book of Revelation, mm-hmm. it's because she was resembling that spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, it was the same spirit. So he was saying, "Listen, this woman's moving in the spirit of Jezebel." But uh, I, when you really go to the core of it. She was, she, as a worshiper of Baal, or daughter of Baal, she was personifying Anana, which we go back, which is actually the whore of Babylon. She's the original whore that we, we see coming out of Samaria that, in, in Babylon. And it, it, Mary, that is the spirit of this age, mm-hmm. is, is, is Anana. It really is. And, it's, and that's why there's such, um, there are mighty women of God in his kingdom. And yes. I am not at all taken away from that or positions. Uh, it's well, it's my personal opinion that a woman can't be an apostle or a pastor by herself. Senior pastor, yeah. Yep. That's just my opinion because it puts her in authority yeah. over over men. And so I, I don't know how to get around that in the word. It's one of those things that people just knock me over for and say, Well, how could you say that? I I mean I'm I'm a very strong woman. I have big, strong opinions, <laughs> and, and I think that, um, that we work well together in that. It, I don't feel like you're, you're suppressing me, that you don't want me to, to no. fulfill what God's called me to do at all. Um, no, we're a good team. I know that, that the decisions over the ministry, and 
need to be yours. I mean, we discuss it, we discuss it, but that's, and it, and it's because it falls on your shoulders. You'll be responsible for that. Absolutely. And so that's the way I look at that. And, and to be truthful, I have seen a lot of men uh, flow into Jezebel's spirit. Absolutely. It's a, it's, a, it's a controlling spirit. Absolutely. I think my father did for sure. You know, I, I've had to really watch how my mind accepts things because I was raised in a house where my dad was just, he wasn't ever physically abusive to any of us, but he was verbally and emotionally abusive to us. And my mom, he, you know, this is one of the things that you can tell if there's, there's any kind of a, a abusive type thing going on in the house. One of them is the men don't want the women to go anywhere. They, they want them to stay home. A lot of times they don't want them to drive. They don't want them to have a vehicle. Uh, my dad didn't want my mom going anywhere. Um, and, and, so, and it was just all about, I know what it was, is he felt unsafe in everything, just like I did. And so he thought he had to control it to keep everything okay. I, you know, one time we put some makeup on my mom after we got older. Um, my sister was a teenager, and she'd got makeup, and so we put some makeup on on my mom and my dad came home and went through the roof. I mean, he exploded and it wasn't anything big. It was a little, little mascara and things. So my mom had the most beautiful eyelashes you've ever seen. You couldn't see them because they were blonde. But I mean, when she, I mean, she's just beautiful. And um, I, I just, those things just stand out in my mind so much. And, and it was one of the reasons at my foundational level, I wasn't going to be told what to do by any man. You know, and I and when I worked at Fort Leonard, what I had to, my boss was a man, and the people I worked around there, but I would say the most horrible things in my head to them because I couldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good. I'm not proud of that. Uh, but I just, I just called them names. I just such you big. And I, I remember this uh, one guy that I worked with. I think I've told this before, but he, he was telling me that boy, when he got home, that his wife better have their sheets powdered. Like I guess he wanted to put perfume powder on the beds, and there better be everything. And, and I thought, mm. <laughs> I said, well, that's something. <laughs> and in my head, I was going, you're the biggest da 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 I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm serious, guys. I mean, it was just. And so, I totally understand the dynamics of both of these. Like like where where somebody's in a in a marriage and let's say they're both saved but the husband's just he's he's so pressed down he won't take the lead yeah you know he won't take his position so they can work together and so so of course that would be the most frustrating aggravating thing um, and when when you go into homes or churches to where there is strong male godly leadership the first thing the women will say is I feel safe that's it that's it yeah. And and seeing so what what has Satan done within the whole nation is the first thing he did is make it impossible for women to stay at home. Uh, the economy got to the sh- uh, shape if you wanted to own a home, it was about impossible to be able to do that unless both people worked. So it's like you and and our son-in-law that was deceased. You were raised by television. Yeah. And and that's just that's just how it was. And I'm not blaming the women. They did what they they had to do. But Satan just he said, I'm gonna put this in there. And then at the same time you've got all the all the colleges teaching everybody, well, um, not only that is all, you know, you just do what you want. You just you, you know, there's no rules, there's no regulations, and then they, they they make women that do decide to stay home that can, that can take care of their children, like they're lesser. Yeah, or if you or if you have strong Christian opinions, I know there was a, a, a situation up here at the University of Missouri that this woman was going through and I can't remember if it was a psychology program, marriage and family therapy or something, very she was raised Christian, very strong Christian, and they basically refused to graduate her until she took on the liberal points of view, and she ended up suing the, the, the University of Missouri and winning, and not only did they have to give her a degree, they also had to give her all her tuition back. Well, who do you think they put in as, as uh, professors? But that's a communist tactic. You put in, you put in these communist liberals, and, and, they, and a lot of them, Mary, uh, they, they have tenure, and they, they, get, they get put in position because the accreditation requires that pedigree, uh, but once they get tenure, they teach some of the stupidest things because now they can't be fired. And now they'll, they'll tow the rope, you know, 
and until they, 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 they get that tenure. And we have guys that uh, have proven over and over again in many liberal universities to be absolute liars, but because they have tenure, they, right. they stay there. And, 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 and they they're, have they're done re- a job. And they're reteaching history, and it's completely <laughs> wrong, and they can't give you a single uh, footnote of where they get their information because they make stuff up. And they, they have been very successful at what they were sent to do. Yeah. And so you've got this whole thing rolling in our nation. And I know people probably get tired of hearing me talk about Jezebel. Why don't you just shut up and get something else? Well, it's because we don't have it taken care of. And, and understanding the dynamic of how that works in our nation, in homes, in society, if you can get on top of this, guys, if your family can get on top of this, because the Jezebel spirit can work through the man or the woman, and the Ahab spirit can work through the man or the woman. Mm-hmm. It's, it's whoever is, you know, like, get on top of it and control it, and the other one goes, well, I'm just going to do what i got to do to survive. To survive. Yep. And then it may switch. And, and for a while, the other one does that. And um, Now, at the end of my mom's life, I am telling you, she hated my dad. I mean, it was just apparent. My kids had come home after they'd been there a while, and they'd say, Mom, Grandma, flip Grandpa off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she did. She, she got to the point where she was so sick of everything um, it was it was just horrible to watch the disintegration um, of what what used to be halfway normal, and and but see those spirits were so working in our in our family, oh my goodness, and they worked in your family where you were raised. Yeah, they did. So we were prime pickings for these things to just you know go after it. We were, to come out of that, we were kind of like Abraham when God told him to leave Babylon, go into a land he didn't know and didn't. It's like, we're getting ready to go into uncharted territory yeah. and actually return back to what the Bible says is supposed to be normal because we, we had no example. We had no example, and boy, we were in a mess. You know, by the time we, we got to the place where we recognized this and God told me I, you know, I had one, showed me I had one. Uh, and And... I was able to cast the thing out. You know, I, I said, hey, you're not working through anymore. I, I've got to I submit myself to God, and he can, can get me to where the place where you can't touch me anymore. But that didn't renew my mind. Mm. And so that's, the, that's what's so hard. You know, to me, getting the spirit realm to let go of you is you plead the blood of Jesus into the place they came in. Ask forgiveness for any sins, sins of your ancestors. You say, hey, Jesus broke this curse. And, and I'm not letting you affect me anymore. But then you have a whole lifetime of the mental gymnastics that those spirits did with you. And, and, it's, and you still are in a healing process from wounds, from um, insecurities, from all these things that me and Mike both had. Yep. And, and thank God Mike had the, the training he did, and there was an anointing already established in his life. And so I'm so thankful for that. But I'm telling you, we, we had some rock and roll times, didn't we? We did. And, and you know, I, I think if we don't go to the renewing of the mind, and this, this is where the, I think that sometimes dealing with the spirit originally is the easy part. The hard part is that spirit has mentored you to think like it does and to react like it does. And uh, I was praying this morning for a family as I was doing some things in there, and I said, God, uh, they're, they're like puppets on a string. Cut the strings. And the Holy Spirit said, I have four or five times, but they keep tying them back on. And that's exactly how it works. And you, you can open it back up. That's why you have to be so careful in deliverance. I mean, I'm studying deliverance because I don't know that anybody's got it right. I see people casting things out of people, and I'm thinking, well, I sure hope you've got somebody to connect them to. To after, okay, you cast it out. Now you got to make sure the doors are closed. You got to train them, and yeah. I don't know if that gets done. I, th- I think one of the most balanced approaches, and this comes out of England, and it's it's. Uh, I think it's one volume now, but it was two books by Peter Horbin that he had done this long enough that they have they have pre deliverance counseling and post deliverance counseling. That's good. That's good. Because you you've got to make sure they're ready to get rid of it. You get rid of it. Okay, now it's time to make sure all those places are filled in with the kingdom and the Holy Spirit, and you begin to relearn how to operate without that spirit and learn to operate by the Holy Spirit. And unless you have all those three, you know, if if, if all you're doing is going to meeting and all they're doing is casting out spirits and then leaving town, 
you've just opened that person up to get seven worse than what they had. Hopefully they're connecting them to a church or I, something. I hope because, so. Because I've seen the effects of that, mistakes I've made. You know, early on, a um, member of my family, I, I knew we had Jezebel, and so I went and cast out of both of us. And it left me, but then that was the night when it came back and we were walking through our homes looking for a female because it was so entangled in us. And see, the other person never got anything after that. And so in that case, it comes back, like the Bible says, stronger. And so there's a whole lot that I'm just in right now just trying to absorb as much information as I can and testimonies of ministers and to see and line it up with the Word because there may be a day when we need to do deliverance. And so, and, and I, I think approaching it with prayer, there's, there's a story about the Apostle Paul that this woman began following him, and for three days she was in the background saying, this guy's a man of God, this guy's a man of God. And it's like, okay, my PR team's here. <laughs> modern, modern church, well, glory to God, send her out. Let her. And, and, you know, Paul didn't deal with it for three days because I think he sat there and prayed and fasted. This, this is my opinion. It's, it's not in Scripture, but there has to be a reason why he, he waited three days, and it was like he waited until the Holy Spirit said now. And the woman had a python spirit. And a python spirit is a false spirit of prophecy. And if you, if you understand uh, the mystery religions, uh, the reason that the Apollo, the, the prophetesses of Apollo, like at, at Corinth with the oracles of Delphi, the reason they had the ability to prophesy is that uh, within the legend, Apollo had conquered a, a, a great python that had the ability to foretell the future. Therefore, all of his disciples those that were in his service were given the ability to prophesy. And Mary, I, I just wonder how much of, in, in today's church, there would be that woman would not only be allowed to operate, but they would probably put her on the ministry team because well, there's sure. not discernment for sure. the way that should be. And, and so I, I, I think that uh, we, we need to go back. We need to begin really building the foundation of the word. And we need to understand there is a timing to everything. Uh, the man that was that was lame at the gate beautiful. How many times did Jesus walk past that same guy? Because he was at the gate beautiful. Jesus walked past him and never healed him. Why? Because God had said there was going to come a time when Peter and John was there that they could say, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have in the name of Jesus rise up and walk. There, There is a timing to things. That's why. That's why it's so important, guys, in the days ahead, we're going to need to know the word, and we're going to need to know the voice of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. because it, it it could be a matter of life and death. It could be a matter of blessing and cursing. It, it it could be a lot of things. Well, and that's that's the concern I have. That's why I talk so much about these things. Is is maybe you know just one person just starting to listen. Maybe they're going to say, well that that might be affecting me and can get on top of it because where these spirits have access, it it you know Jezebel spirit. Um, would can mess you up in your head and get you to to do things you shouldn't, but she won't be by herself. No, she's going to bring in spirits of infirmity. She's going to bring in anything that if you get out of line, if you aren't following what that spirit wants you to do, it's going to attack you like a son of a gun. I mean it. I I'm telling you, it's and I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. It goes after your health. It goes after, and and the trouble I've seen. I still don't know what to do do about it because I think God's still showing me things and and training me in an area. But um, there's a dynamic in families that that if you if you have spirits that are operating in your family, you may get one person praying and working on it. It'll just go stay with the other people. Yeah, <laughs> it'll just go stay with the other DNA. Till it till it can come back. It's just like look, the matrix. Anybody can become an agent. <laughs> I can look back in my life and a person in my family, when they were doing wrong, I mean big wrong, then I was able to, it, was, it seemed like I was able to make a little bit of progress. And if they would get in church and try to, it'd come to me. And I'd look back and think, man, that thing is just bouncing back and forth between us. And, and I've seen that happen. I think um, it can bounce back between husband and wife. And, oh, absolutely it can. Yeah. And, and we've seen it operate in our yeah. lives. That's why we talk about this. It's, it was as obvious as anything how it worked. It took our insecurities. It took every wound we had. And it would just, just bounce back and forth and yeah. back and forth. I'd say things I shouldn't say. You'd say things you shouldn't say. And we would just bounce back and forth. And so when we finally saw it, um, we we both 
could together say, you're not doing this anymore. How many times that, you know, the apostle Paul said, give the enemy no place. That's right. And there, <laughs> and it's in the churches. That's what we're seeing. Unfruitful works of darkness. Yes. They aren't bringing fruit. If we, if all of these things that people have, have done and laying on the hands and laughing and doing this and that and jerking in the floor, if that was from God, we should have turned the nation around by now. Yes. But you know what I've seen? You, what are we to judge? The fruit. What's the fruit in those people's lives? Did they go forward in God? How's their health doing right now? It's, it's the, those, those spirits are coming to destroy us. It doesn't matter how it looks. That's their goal. Now, let me say this. Don't just look at money because the enemy will profit something because he wants to make it an example. Okay? It's the fruit of the spirit, the Christ-likeness. We, we, we need to quit judging things according to Laodicean sp- uh, standards and go back to the Word of God. Because um, we can say, well, you know, well, look how big they're getting. They're prospering. They're doing, well, well, they're teaching astral projection. They're teaching grave soaking. They're teaching whatever, and is, which is not in the Word of God. And we, we need to have the discernment to say, you know what? I don't care if that if every, if every every church expert says that is not a way to make your church grow. You're going to have a hundred thousand people that are going to split hell wide open, and they're going to line up to receive the mark of the beast. Or you can have two or three hundred that are saints that are equipped, that are ready for warfare, that are manifesting not only the the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit that manifest Christ and that can hear from heaven. Not only can they hear from heaven, but have developed a prayer life that when they pray, heaven moves. I would rather have that 300 than the 100,000 over there. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's the truth. We're looking for who God wants us to be with. Yes. You know, because there, there needs to be community, good community established for the end days. But it's got to start with the home. And so, you know, like, like give different examples of both, both like a woman in bondage and the husband is, you know, not doing what he's supposed to do and, and things like that. She's, she's got to, um, she would have to pray that her husband would get to the point that they could both pray together. Mm Mm-hmm. And and then if it's the if it's the wife that's controlling, you do everything that you can to to pray that 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 would break. But at some some point, one person's got to start it. Either the wife or the husband would have to start that prayer to get God's intervention in the situation, and then they would both have to work together. There's some people may end up in divorce because they can't they just can't do it. You know, men men have to. What does it say in the Word about? It says um, husbands are supposed to love their wives as Jesus loved the church, meaning his people. That means that husbands should have their wife's best interest in mind. Her health and welfare should be a priority. So a husband would have to ask himself that. Yeah. He, and every decision we make, how is it going to affect my family? Is it going to make it. things harder on my wife? Is it going to make things easier on my wife? Uh, we, we, we have, we've got to put the welfare. Now, with a with husband and wife, if they put the welfare and the desires of each other over themselves, that's a dynamic for growth. And there, and there are situations that, that I've heard of that I just think, I don't even know how it could get fixed. But I, I know with God it's possible. If they could both get a hold of the concept of what these spirits can do and fight that, I think that it would be an amazing yeah. Get upset at the spirits and quit being mad at each other because a house divided cannot stand. The trouble is, and, and we know this, you have years of hurts built there, things that are going on. And so my opinion is if, if, if that's going on in your family and, and you think that you can, you can see how this is working, you could take it from a spiritual point of view and pray and ask that God would, would work on that other person. It doesn't do a whole lot of good to just condemn them and start saying their faults and stuff like that because that's just going to drive a wedge and make them more determined to, that they're right. Yeah. And so what I had to do is I was Well, somebody's just, got to change. You, you can't do the same thing over and over again and, and expect different results. Right. And so in, in our situation, I had to do that. And, yeah. and I think I had the dominant area for that thing to work in for sure so i i was trying to take care of it in me and then at the same time ask god well and that one time god had me ask him to restore what i killed in you so obviously that spirit was working in me big time to press you down 
And but at the same time, then there were changes God had to have you make. Yeah, and there were things in me that was pressing you down. So there's there's like this chain reaction over and over again. Now that, and, none of this was abuse, though. No, that Mike was always he was never an abuser in any way, verbally, emotionally, none of that. Uh, if in, if one of us was, it would have been me because of the things I said. I said some rough stuff sometimes, um, but we had to work on it together. Yeah. And what I'm talking about is you get you got you have to break the cycle. Yeah, and you you have and I, I remember, and this shows you the bad state I was in. I was actually going back through with with different shows and different things and saying, okay, where did I see anything that even resembled a godly man or what what a strong man should be? And I I had to formulate in my head because I had never seen it. So it's like I was taking all these pieces to the puzzle and trying to assemble it along with the Word of God saying, this is what a man should be, and I'm going to start trying to be that because I had, you know, it's, it's like I'm going to try to be something that I've never seen before. And well, and you were trained in the ministry, too, to be um, not cause problems, yeah. not be, they, they didn't train you to be confrontational on things. And so well, no, the, uh, back then it was like a pastor was just supposed to pat on head and love people right. and never be confrontational. And so in the back of my head, just to give you an example, I was looking for, I needed somebody to be strong, strong because of what I'd been through and, and what nobody even could see it happened. I need somebody to be really strong. And, and that just wasn't the way you were taught. So I was wanting you to watch Rambo and Die Hard <laughs> and those kind of things. I want you to take up weapons, honey. <laughs> she was wanting me to say, Murdoch, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Because that's that's how that's kind of how my back personalities were formed, and and uh, it, but I knew I mean every part of me loved God, and they were finally figuring the thing out. And they were finally figuring out this is the way out of this thing. But I didn't know how to get us both there. But God was so faithful, guys, yeah. and that's what we want to tell you. If there's something going on in your family and you think, man, this needs to get fixed out, or we can't go on, and God, God can take you there. He can. If he can take us there, he can take anybody there. And you know, and I, I hear from people what's going on. I, I got an email this last week that uh, I guess the pastors really having physical problems stuff, so they let someone else preach. And the person preached out of Norman Vincent Peale, and actually told people, if you can't read the Bible, read Norman Vincent oh, Peale. Oh, that's not a good idea. And I'm thinking, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> and uh, guys, it, it has to come back to the Word of God that we 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 have got to. How can I say this? Sometimes the Word of God can be hard because God will confront what's going on with you. The devil will pat you on the head and say, that's all right, God understands, you know, and, and just hand you a lollipop. Sometimes we have to have hard preaching. Sometimes Mary and I deal with things that may be a little rough to deal with. They're hard for people uh, to hear. But but the truth is we we, we have to, if we if we... Deal with the hard questions, and this is one of the things that I was taught in the military. When you're looking at, you know, setting up base and, and looking at what the the enemy's doing and stuff, if you ask yourself the hard questions on whether you're prepared or not, it allows you to address your blind spots. It allows you to address the areas that are weakened that the enemy has easy access to. Um, because of the, what what I'm sensing prophetically is God's going to change America. But you, the enemy's not just going to lay yeah. down. And so if there's an area in your life that, that Satan is attacking you, before we can get the nation okay, we got to get the Christian families okay. we got to get them some ammo so they can come together and fight because there's arrows pointed at the families. Yes. And, and we're seeing that day after day. And so I'm trying to give some information from our experience to help people look at something and totally put their trust in God. Because I can tell you, the thing that kept me stable through everything that I went through was I didn't care what happened around me. God had promised me he was going to take care of me, and I knew he would. Yes. And so I kept my focus there, not on things around me, not how crazy everything looked, and at times impossible but I put my trust in him. And so if there's a dynamic going on in your family, you think, man, we're not strong spiritually. We aren't, aren't getting anything done. 
Start seeking God on that, and yeah. He'll He'll show you, won't He, hun? Step he by is, step, He will. And a lot of the, uh, one of the examples I use in in uh, several of my books, and it's the the Tabernacle of Moses, which I call the d- the divine universal template. You got to be strong with God. Then your family has to be strong. Then you move to community. Yeah, because they, there's talk that they're. Uh, I heard it today, and I thought, well, this would make sense. Like what they do, is that they're going to try uh, to get Michelle Obama in there. And because it would it would behoove the spirits over this nation to get a woman in there, mm-hmm. um, and so that's that's one of the things that that I think we need to pray. And somebody even mentioned Michelle Obama with Hillary Clinton as the vice president. I don't think Hillary'd go for that because she wants the lead. But just just for you know something to pray about. I mean, yeah. that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd, if, I'd, if that was the case, I'd be very afraid if I was. Obama. <laughs> well, it's like I'm going to be alive in presidency for two weeks. And so we're coming up to July 4th this yep. week, very pivotal time, very occult time. And why don't you talk about the J- July 4th for just a minute? Yeah, what, what people don't realize in July 4th, why why is it that the, the founding of a nation, because they actually did the Constitution and everything before July 4th, and why did they wait to July 4th? The Masons that were involved with it, they they they... They had to move beyond what the abuse of Europe with the royal families that were teaching the divine right of kings to rule, and they would try to use Bible verses to justify it. So they went back to a more ancient power going back to the pharaohs. That's why there's so much stuff within the Freemasonry and all that that goes back to Egypt, (coughs) which God was supposed to have delivered us out of. The 4th of July, the star Cirrus is directly over Washington, D.C., so there is a, a alignment, alignment. In, in fact, if you, if you look, and Chris Pinto did a wonderful uh, documentary called Riddles in Stone that I think is even on YouTube. Now, if you guys get a chance to watch it, it's about a three-hour video, super, super informative. But uh, there's, there's so much they do. Have you ever seen the reflecting pools like they have up in D.C.? That you'll, there's, there's one by the Washington Monument. There's one by the Lincoln Monument, different things. And it expresses the hermetic principle as above, so below. And so they, they try to tap into astral things. And what's interesting, in, in fact, within the mystery religions and the occult, they teach that life would not even be possible on earth if it wasn't for the star Cirrus. Well, that is also called the dog star. It's like, you know, when we get into August, it's dog days. But it's known by another name, the Luciferian star. And so they're, they're, they, they look directly to Lucifer for the power to govern and, and different things. That's why they, they waited till the 4th of July. Because at, uh, on, on, it's only on D.C. It's, you have to be within that region that Sirius is directly overhead, that phallic symbol. And so, um, you know, I love my country. I served in the military. But there's a lot of junk that we just need to pray over so the enemy can't use. Yeah, it's... It- Fourth of July is so difficult for me because I'm I've always been so patriotic. I love this nation, and you know I can't hear this um, national anthem without boohooing. Um, we the one of the cult sites I saw one time talked about the energy. They they were just it was just like um, putting it out there for everybody that was in the occult. Saying now we know that the energy within each of the stars on the flag that we can we can um, project energy through and all these all these different things just like it was nothing and I thought most people don't have a clue what they can do um, with those things and and see that you know like I'm not saying the people that put the flag together may have even known what it was but I'm telling you there was an influence there to get that yeah. just like it is and so you know I that usually people wear stars on that day uh, the there's a whole th- um, there's a whole thing, and I, I can't even remember the names of it, but there's a, what was the name of that spirit? That when they take the fireworks off, it is to bring homage to them. And I thought they call that the birthday of the nation. So, you know, it's like the Artemis thing. Artemis. But anyway, it, it just gets me because I want everybody to know how much I, I love the nation and how um, how loyal I am. And I'm telling you, they've... I've got a part of me that was trained to be loyal. <laughs> um, I think one of the interesting thing too, originally they wanted those stars to be hexagrams, 
And Betty Ross says, I can't sew that. So they did a five pot of star. Oh. But what's interesting is when it's, when, it, when it's straight, you have pentafas, all right? When it's draped, you have baphomets. Well, they, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, they and did. so my thought for the prayers for this 4th of July is I believe this is a significant 4th of July that they have planned that is going with all of the, the agenda of the elite. Now, I think things are, have been screwed up. <laughs> Thank God, you know, God's God's watching everything. There's nothing hidden. And, and I think what we need to pray is, Father, we just ask you to um, forgive the sins that have given power to the enemy's camp to use this time to not only harm our nation, but to harm the people. Yeah. I ask that you'd cover every star on anybody's T-shirt, any hat, anything they're wearing, on any flag that's being held, that that could not be a point for those in the occult to use uh, to attack people through. I ask that you would, would protect everyone. I ask that you thwart every plan and scheme. And, Father, reveal the agenda of the enemy. Father, make this time to where they, they have hidden their occult power to use during this time. But, Father, you can reveal what the enemies do. And I'm asking you to turn it around just like that, uh, that Esther anointing when, when everything Haman planned, it all came back on him. And I'm yes. asking that this would be returned to the, the evil people that are planning this, that are, are trying to bring harm to everyone. Lord, you're bigger. Yeah. You're bigger in all your people. And, Father, I just ask that you'd cover every door, that anybody that's participating in anything for the 4th of July, that they're, they would be shielded, that your mercy would cover them. Father, most people don't even know that there's anything wrong. And, Father, I wouldn't have known if you hadn't shown me and shown me what the occult were doing with it and how they wore the the stars on, on this day. And, you know, guys, I had... Uh, I had witches that I watched, so I knew what they were, you know, I could tell what they were doing. And so, Father, we just ask that you would break every power of witchcraft. Yes. I, just, I just take authority right now, because, Father, this is through deception. And, Father, I, your spirit of truth can crush deception and yes, lies. It can. And so we just come into agreement with your kingdom over this time. We just declare that it's a time that you're going to use. These are days you've made. And, Father, we declare kingdom power, kingdom rule. We declare that, that you, uh, through your people's prayers, as, as we forbid the occult activity, as if we forbid the satanic movements, we forbid the uh, occult workings, Father, and we loose the power of your kingdom to override it, overthrow it, protect your people. And, Father, I ask, I come against spirits of depression. I come against spirits of... Um, um, infirmity, everything that's being used right now to, to attack your people so that they can't stand strong, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I loose the power of the kingdom of God to bring you strength, to bring you encouragement, to bring you health. For every person that's a believer, I speak health over you. I speak life over you. I just ask that the anointing would go forth and strengthen you in a way that you can't even understand, that, that, that youth is going to be returned to you, that, that all the things that the enemy's stolen, the canker worms of Eden, that that's going to be returned to you for this end day's battle. And, Father, I just ask yes. that you'd raise up your army. Raise up your army, Father. We are battle ready. You've given us everything we need. Father, heal our bodies. Strengthen us. Cause depression and all of these spirits that are attacking us to run for the hills. Let your anointing so invade where we are that it it's brings stark terror to the enemy's camp. For you are greater. You are almighty God. There's none that can stand yes, beside Lord. you. There is none that, that is all seeing, all knowing. But Father, you see every step the enemy's making and we speak defeat to the enemy's camp that you're, they're not going to get what they want done on this 4th of July. And Father, I ask that you send your armies of angels and disperse them roadblock every attempt to do anything wicked. Yes. And, Father, we thank you. We know that you're working in our lives. We know that you're working in the believers that are listening to us. And if there's anybody listening that's in the occult or that's not saved, I pray for your salvation. I ask that God would send armies of angels to fight for you, to fight for your soul and free you from the bondages. Yes. In Jesus' name. And, Father, we pray for revival, Father. Revival of the individual first. Then the family then the community of faith, and then the nation. 
Father, let us no longer look for somebody else to fix it somewhere else. But, Father, let us have the attitude, if anybody's going to serve God, it's going to be me. If anybody's yes. going to get yes, in the Word, Father. it's going to be me. If anybody's going to have a sure foundation, it's going to be me. If anybody's going to walk with God the way he's supposed to, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to see it established in my family, and then I'll see it established in my church. And from there, it will flow to the nation. And, Father, we just give you the thanks and the praise for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.